Aw, oh, man. Have you ever been excited to play a new game only to realize that your poor old gaming PC can't quite run it? If you're one of the 14 million people who bought Cyberpunk 2077, then I know you've had that problem before. Regardless, you may have heard of system requirements. Every modern game has them, and if read correctly, they can teach you exactly what hardware you need to play any game you want. Today, I'll be teaching you how to read them and telling you exactly what you need to know. Before we begin, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. We have a lot of future content planned. Let's begin by selecting a game. I've been playing a lot of Forza Horizon 4 lately. So here we are on the store page for Forza Horizon 4. I actually own the game through the Microsoft Store, but nobody likes the Microsoft Store, so we're using Steam instead. If we scroll down, we can see the system requirements right down here. You can see that we have minimum, and then we have recommended requirements. However, I would recommend shooting for the recommended requirements whenever possible. If you meet the minimum requirements, you might be able to play on low graphic settings at a suboptimal frame rate, which may be okay for a game like Forza, but if you're playing anything competitive, you're really going to want to meet the recommended settings so you're able to keep up with the competition. Recommended settings should mean that you can play on medium to high settings, definitely at 60 frames per second if not higher. While there's a lot of information here, we can actually break it down into two categories. The first category is things that you need if you're going to run this game. For Forza Horizon 4, you can see that it requires a 64-bit processor, Windows 10, and 100 gigabytes of available storage. If you don't meet these requirements, you will not be able to play the game at all. However, they're very easy to check. From your desktop, click in the search bar and type about your PC. Here you'll be able to see two of the three requirements. You can see that we are running a 64-bit operating system, and we have Windows 10 Pro, although Windows 10 Home would be just fine as well. The good news is that if your PC is less than 5 or 6 years old, I can almost guarantee that you'll meet these requirements, assuming it's a PC and not a Chromebook or a Mac or something like that. To check the available storage on your PC, open the File Explorer. Click this PC on the left, and you should see all of your available drives under the Devices and Drives tab. Now in this PC, I have a solid state drive and a hard drive, and I put most of the games on the hard drive, unless if there's something I really like. However, you might have a different storage configuration, and you can install them however you choose. Regardless, for Forza Horizon 4, we need 100 available gigabytes, which you can see that we do have on both of the drives. I will say that you'll want to stay below 90 or so percent on both of the drives. You don't want to let them get completely full because then you'll run into other issues. So you've met the requirements that you absolutely need to run the game. Now let's talk about the other category of things that are really recommended by the developers. Most importantly is going to be your graphics card. Steam listed as graphics, but if you see GPU, graphics card, graphics processor unit, or video card, they all mean the exact same thing. For Forza Horizon 4, we can see that they offer many alternatives for your graphics card. However, we're just going to look at the first one for the sake of the video, the GTX 970. Let's compare that to our current graphics card and see if we have enough power. To check your current graphics card, there's a few different methods. However, the way I recommend is going to your search bar and typing in Task Manager. Click the More Details tab in the bottom left, and then click Performance. We can see many of our various PC components on this page. GPU 0 on the bottom is my graphics card. If you see in the upper right, it says NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. Now 3060 is a much higher number than 970, so logic will tell you that this is a newer and more powerful graphics card. Which does happen to be true in this case, but that's not always going to be the case. Say you have a GTX 1050, Regardless of it being a higher number than 970, that's actually a weaker card than the recommended GTX 970. We could talk about VRAM or generation or RTX versus GTX or all of these different variables about the graphics card, but I'm not going to get into that for this video. We'll be making more in-depth videos in the future, so be sure to stay tuned. Instead, what I recommend is that if you're a beginner and you don't know how to understand these PC parts, you want to go to a website called userbenchmark.com. It'll be linked in the description down below. So here we are at userbenchmark.com. There's a lot of different websites that provide the same information, but this is the one that I prefer. 
If you click the GPU tab in the upper left here, we can compare our graphics card to the recommended one. The GTX 970 is the card that's recommended by Forza Horizon 4, so we'll click the little checkbox underneath compare right here. Make sure you don't go for the M variants or any of the other ones because that's not the same graphics card as the 970 which was listed. My graphics card is an RTX 3060 Ti, which we can see right here. If we click the checkbox for a compare, now it'll give us a comparison between the two. According to userbenchmark.com, the 3060 Ti has an effective speed that is 160% faster than the 970. This comes from a lot of different variables, as you can see down below. There's tons of different things that go into this testing. Definitely not going to get into that for this video. This is going to be much more high level. But as you can see, our graphics card is a lot more powerful, and that's all we needed to know. If the effective speed is within 15 or so percent, or your graphics card is higher than the recommended card, you should be just fine. What's really helpful about userbenchmark.com is that if you have an AMD graphics card and maybe the game developers only listed an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll still be able to compare the two. Let's say we have an RX 470. We can click here and see that the RX 470 will be 25% slower than the GTX 970. Now that's a large enough difference that you might need an upgrade if you want to run the game on recommended settings, or you should go into it knowing that you might have to play on low settings at a suboptimal frame rate. Back at the system requirements, let's talk about the final two things you'll want to check before you download the game and give it a go. While the graphics are definitely most important, the processor can also have a large impact on your gaming experience, especially depending on the game. Processor is synonymous with CPU or central processing unit, they all mean the same thing. We can see that the recommended processor is an Intel i7-3820 at 3.6GHz. If we go back to Task Manager and click the CPU tab at the top, we can see that I have an i5-9600K CPU at 3.7GHz. Now our gigahertz is marginally faster than the 3.6 from the 3820, but that's not exactly going to be enough details to make that comparison. You'll also want to take a look at the core count. You can see that our processor has 6 cores, and a quick google search will tell you that the i7-3820 has 4 cores. The other detail is that our processor is 9th generation, and that's a 3rd generation processor, so ours is about 6 years newer, and it's most likely going to be just fine. However, maybe you don't want to get into these nitty gritty details, or you're not really sure how to compare them, we can again return to userbenchmark.com. Following the same process, we can click the CPU tab this time, and first type in the 3820 that was recommended. We want to make sure we go with the base variant, not the QM one. And then we'll type in 9600K, which is what I have, click compare. And we can see that the 9600K is 28% faster in its effective speed than the 3820, so we'll be just fine. Again, you want to be within maybe 10 or 15%, or you want to exceed the recommended processor. And this is also a great tool because once again, you can compare between AMD and Intel. And finally, we can also check our memory. We can see that Forza Horizon 4 recommends 12GB of RAM, and we can check this very easily from the About Your PC page or from Task Manager. On Task Manager, you'll click the Memory tab, Memory is synonymous for RAM, and we can see in the upper right, we have 32GB installed, which is more than enough of the 12 recommended. Or we can go again to the About Your PC tab, and you can see that we have 32GB of installed RAM, which again, exceeds 12GB. As long as you meet or exceed the recommended amount of RAM, you should be just fine. If it recommends 12 and you only have 8, you might run into some issues, but again, RAM doesn't have a huge impact on performance like your graphics card and your processor will. In conclusion, I hope you learned something new about system requirements. Again, to reiterate, the graphics card is the most important component, followed by the processor, followed by the memory. You'll also want to make sure that you have Windows 10, a 64-bit processor, and enough storage to download the game. If you meet all of those recommended requirements, you should be able to play a game just fine. However, if you're ever running into performance issues, you can always lower the graphics settings or drop down to a lower resolution, and you should be able to get a better frame rate. That's all for today's video. If you learned anything new, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content. I'm Matthew from Big Monkey. I'll see you next time.